7 billion people live on Earth today. 3 million of them have been born because of in vitro fertilization. After more than 30 years of development, IVF still gives rise to a lot of ethical questions. It is possible that this very person was also born because of this biotechnology. Dr. Ravelli has been the first in Italy to treat infertility by transplanting ovarian tissue. He gives his opinion of the impact IVF might have on society. In vitro fertilization is the newest technique to help people that cannot have a baby uh, to have it. Uh, we stimulate the ovary, we collect the oocytes uh, in uh, local anesthesia, we fertilize the eggs in the lab with the sperm of the husband, we cultivate uh, fertilized eggs for two, three days, and then we put in the uterus one or two fertilized eggs and this helps to conceive. Uh, probably uh, freezing and thawing uh, induces some changes, but if they are really harmful, then uh, the egg or the embryo does not survive. There's uh, an effect, uh, uh, nothing or everything. The Catholic Church has a different opinion about assisted reproduction technology. Don Ezio Stagnecki from the Santa Annunziata Church in Turin shares his point of view. Non c'è separazione tra il mondo che io rappresento, quello della fede e quello della scienza e del progredire nella scienza, perché tutto ciò che va a favore dell'uomo, della qualità della sua vita è certamente importante per chi ama, per chi è dalla parte dell'uomo. Well, the Catholic Church is against in vitro fertilization, but we have a lot of Catholic people that cannot get pregnant in a natural way and can get pregnant only with in vitro fertilization. The wish of the baby is stronger than the rules and they do the same. And we have a lot of Catholic people doing IVF. Couples try to conceive through IVF for different reasons. Some of them are infertile because of damaged fallopian tubes, ovulation disorders or male factors such as sperm count or poor quality sperm. Others may be suffering from a disease or have been through chemotherapy. In a biblica in cui è dato sia all'uomo la capacità di conoscere e quindi di chiamare per nome e quindi direi anche di dominare in un qualche modo la terra e quindi di progredire eh, nella sua scienza ma gli è inibita la capacità di esserne padrone e quindi in un qualche modo di manipolarla come egli eh, crede Not all uh, what is technically uh, possible is also ethically acceptable so the laws uh, are needed, you cannot uh, take away the freedom of the researchers, but you can address the research in the directions you want it to go. È ovvio che una vita nascente, un embrione, no? eh, possa essere guardato per alcuni semplicemente come un ricciolo di carne. No one thinks that the embryo is just a piece of meat and no one of us want to produce embryos and throw them away just for research. Per altri invece guardato con rispetto perché è il principio della vita. Even from a purely human point of view, the embryo is not like other pieces of our body. Is a special one. Nasce allora lì so, la discussione eh, filosofica, ma è già vita, diciamolo con la parola classica, ha già un'anima. Right now, Dr. Revelle is working on a new technology. He's trying to separate the stem cells of human testes. That way, you do not need embryos for the same purpose anymore. What happened in the last 30 years? Uh, we can uh, expect uh, that the progress will uh, go on. The aim is to uh, go over the limits that we have now and we hope that we will get it.
even 35 years after the birth of the first in vitro baby, there are still concerns about this technology. Nevertheless, it is still progressing. Nobody knows how big the impact on society will be in the future, but it is still a blessing for couples desperate to fulfill their desire to have children.